my blooming head. What was I thinking? Oh my goodness. What was I thinking? Look at the state of me. Look at the state of that. Golly. <laughs> Look at that spare tire and those man boobs. Woo! <laughs> Well, can't blame me, folks. Can't blame me. Got to cut back on my French fries. That's right. But who cares? We promoted, baby. Back to the championship. Next up, the title. That's right, folks. Back once again with another match preview. This time, looking forward to our next match, our penultimate game in this division up against Charlton at the Valley. We'll talk about that match in just one second, but if you are new to the channel, hit the subscribe button to keep you bang up to date with all things Blackburn Rovers. That's right, the Blackburn Rovers, the championship. Club. We sealed the deal last time out as we picked up a precious victory up against Doncaster, and boy, oh boy, did we need it because Shrewsbury, hot on our heels once again. It looked like, well, early on in that match, maybe around about 60th, 70th minute, it looked like it was, we didn't even have to win because, uh, Shrewsbury were, were losing or they were they were only level at one point but then next time I looked at the score boom 2-1 end up being 3-1 winners for Shrewsbury so uh, much credit to Rovers for hanging on in there despite only scoring in the last 10 minutes but anyway we've talked all about that game we've talked it to death uh, and to be honest with you let's look forward to the next game which is up against Charlton in the Valley let's make it a party to remember folks anyway let's take a look at the match in a little bit more detail here we go uh, the match will take place Saturday, the 28th of April, 2018, at the Valley last season. Charlton finished 13th in the division. They're doing much, much better this time out. Finish it, currently f uh, find themselves fifth spot in the playoff spots. Um, and they would like to uh, cement that by beating Blackburn Rovers, who have, we've only lost for, what, five times this season? So, tall order, none the same. Top, current top goal scorer is Josh McGinnis with 10 goals. And the man pulling the strings right now, it's not GB, it's Libby. That's right, Lee Bowyer. He's currently in a caretaker role, which I think he's done such a good job. He's probably going to get it full time anyway. So over the t over the years, the two sides have met 77 times in all competitions and in all grounds. Blackburn Rovers winning 36 of them, Charlton winning 25, and the two sides have drawn 17 apiece. So let's take a look at the last five results between the last two sides at the Valley. Last time out, 23rd of January 2016, it was a 1-1 draw between the two sides in the Championship. Uh, in the back in the 14th of March 2015, also in the championship, uh, Rovers winning 3-1. Uh, middle of the pack right there, 3rd of January 2015, I was at this game, it was an FA Cup match. 2-1 winners, uh, top of the shop there, 1-1 draw, also in the championship. But basically, the last time that we played these, the, the, the Charlton has been in the championship, all the FA Cups. So let's take a look at the starting 11, first and foremost, our host. This is how I see them lining up, Amos in goal, Consa, Bauer, Pierce, Page, Reeves, Kashi, Foster Kasky, Fosu Henry, Jose, and McGuinness. Let's take a look at the statistics for Charles. Current top goal scorer is McGuinness with 10 goals. Fonsu's in there with 9. Reeves with 7. And Aribo is in there with 6. As for the yellows, uh, Kashi tops pops with 10 yellows. Foster Kasky's also got 10 yellows. so has got 8. And Konsa Nungungu has 7. As for the Reds, guess what? No Reds in the books. Last time, well, the last five fixtures... Full Charlton looked like this last time out. They did beat Portsmouth 1 0 at uh, Fratton Park. Before that, they beat Shrewsbury 2 0 at their place. Uh, before that, they were they were beaten at home by Scunthorpe United. Uh, all the way back 10th of April, they lost to AFC Wimbledon on the road. And all the way back Saturday, 7th of April, they were draw they were held to a 1 1 draw up against Bristol Rovers. So they've they've not been at home for for they've been at home in one of the last five games, and then that result was a defeat. So hopefully we can uh, continue that vein and get another win for us. Because we are still battling, despite stealing the deal and getting promoted, we are still trying to trying to take that top spot and maybe rub someone's face in it. Um, need I say more? Anyway, let's take a look at Blackburn Rovers. This is where I think they will line up pretty much. I think it's going to be as you were on uh, Tuesday. Ryan Gold, Bennett, Lenahan, Mulgrew, Williams, Evans, Dax, Smallwood, Armstrong, Graham, and Conway. I have, I've got a feeling that you, you, we could maybe rotate it a little bit, but why not? There's only two games left. Let these boys play it out. There is still something to fight for because uh, I think we want to go up as champions. So let's take it on. Anyway, let's take a look at the statistics for Rovers. Top of the Pops, Bradley Dack with 19 goals. Then Graham's in second spot with 17 goals. Charlie Mulgrew added to his tally. Most important goal of his career in my eyes. Anyway, he has scored 14 goals and Armstrong is in there with nine 
goals in fourth place. As for the discipline, Small with top spots, 10 yellows, then Bennett with eight, Evans with eight, Williams has seven. As for the reds, Bennett top spots with two reds, Samuel with one, and Lewis Travis has won last five results for Rovers. Looked like this last time out, that massive victory which gave, sealed the deal and got us back into the championship. 1-0 away win at the keep moat uh, against Doncaster. Before that, we beat Peterborough 3-1 away. Scrap that. 3-1 at home. Uh, before that, we were held to a 1-1 draw up against stubborn Bristol Rovers, who have, who've hit a really good bit of form, but just too little too late for them to get in the playoffs. Anyway, uh, before that, we were held to a 0-0 draw up against Gillingham. And all the way back, Saturday, 7th of April, was a 1-0 home win against South End. Now, let's take a look at the fixtures for this weekend. Now, a lot has been decided at the top. Uh, two sides will be going up, and it is Wigan and it is Blackburn Rovers. Now, the playoffs are still wide open. And you would think, you would think it's up between, uh, uh, well, Shrewsbury are sealed in there. I think Rotherham are sealed in there. Charlton, Scunthorpe, Plymouth and Portsmouth are the teams that are realistically battling out for a, uh, for a playoff spot. You could mathematically include Peterborough and Bradford, but I don't think, well, Bradford, tell a lie. Uh, according to this table on our right-hand side, they do have three games left. So Bradford still have an outside shot of getting in. Um, and, uh, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how that plays out. Uh, Portsmouth, yeah. I don't know. I, it's, it's, I, I would love to see Shrewsbury go up because they were there or thereabouts throughout the, throughout the course of the season. They started off really well and they just held on. And they've been stubborn little buggers uh, ever since. So I would really like to see them go up. But um, I don't know. I've 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 got a bit of a bit of a bit of a an evil kind of um, evil sort of feeling towards whoever goes up because I'm obviously I'm trying to I am forever Blackburn Rovers but I want to make sure our our the 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 teams in the, in the championship are a lot weaker than us so I think Shrewsbury they've done fantastically well this season. I, don't, I think they'll get, uh, hopefully they'll seal the deal and get themselves back into the championship or get into the championship. Um, but I'm looking at, I'd like to keep, like, for, I, I'm really chuffed to bits at Sunderland going down. I'm also, I'm hoping Birmingham will go down. I really want some of the big, bigger teams to go down so that we have a good chance to stay up at the first attempt. But that's just my little twisted back story sort of thing. But anyway, let's take a look at some of the other matches in here uh, towards the bottom end of the table. MK Don's pretty much pretty much down unless they score some amazing amount of goals in the last two games. I don't see it happening. So Northampton, Oldham, Walsall, Rochdale and Wimbledon are the teams uh, and even Gillingham, maybe even Oxford. Gosh, there is still a few teams that could go down um, but uh, you would say probably from the 22nd up until 18th are really in the thick of things. Uh, so hopefully Oldham can scrape through. To be honest with you, I'd like Walsall to go down. No disrespect to Walsall, but I want Ertzheimer to come to Rovers. He's a quality player. So we've talked a little bit about the Charlton game in this weekend's fixtures. Let's turn the clock back to Tuesday night and listen to the skipper, Charlie Mulgrew, about that winning goal, that promotion feeling, and all the kind of good stuff shortly after the Doncaster match and the final whistle. Unbelievable, to be honest. Um... We knew what we had to do tonight and that was our full focus. You could see the way we played, we were on the front foot and, and um, missed a few chances in the first half and we thought maybe, we kept believing, but we thought maybe it's not going to be our night and then we, we get the goal and pff, words can't describe how, uh, how happy that changing room is and, and all the hard work this season we've put in, um, we deserve it. I, I thought it was over. As soon as, it, as soon as I looked, I didn't see the ball. And I don't, I, I, I don't remember. I just remember boys running towards me, and <clears throat> as I say, it's, it's the best feeling I can remember, and and uh, in my football career, to be honest. So, great feeling. That's what I mean. That was that was a full focus. I mean, after that day, it was unbelievable. Um, there were some very upset people, and we were we were we were hurting, but um, we faced up to it. We we realised that we were the ones that were here were were part of the squad that that, that went down, and it was our duty to to fight and get us back up and <clears throat> we've done that we've done it for all the fans we've done it for ourselves we've done it for our families and we'll hopefully made a lot of people proud all the best thank you um, nah it was some some support I mean uh, the whole season they were behind us and the way crowd is unbelievable it's very humbling and, and it's a proud proud moment for us we're, we've done it for them and um, uh, we're just so happy really no, they can't, and it shows the. It's no luck. It just shows the hard work and the determination and the belief and the and the, 
the fight in the squad. There's games where you need to hang on. There's games where you need to, you need to uh, kick it and head it and fight. And it's not easy. It's not as plain sailing as as uh, just turning up, and winning games. Teams in front of you that want to win, want to want to beat you. You're you're the scalp. So we've shown some great character. We've been behind before. And we've come back and um, a big credit. It's got to go to the boys in the changing room, the manager, the staff. Everybody worked together, pulled in the right direction, and showed some real heart and, and uh, quality. That's that's our focus now. I mean, uh, it'll be difficult. We're getting our big, big favourites. Um, they're, they're ahead and two games to go, so it's, it's well in their hands, but we'll keep fighting away at the end. Now you've heard what the skippers had to say. What has their gaffer had to say about their match? And also looking forward to the match up against Charlton. Oh, what a night. How we didn't score two or three goals for staff, I will never know. It's um, to make that a little bit more comfortable for us because that was a bit nervy there. Five minutes at the end and especially after what happened at uh, Bristol for us the other day. It's, um, but listen, we got there. We, we managed the, the game tonight. We deserved to win. And yet there was some scary moments as well. Um, Pleased for the fans, that goal going in down there, the players being able to celebrate with the huge following. Um, the culmination of, of a really, really tough season. I, and, and yet I do think they deserve it. There's lots of games where we dropped daft points, where we could have had more points than this, I think. Um, and yet there's other games where we probably didn't deserve it and sneaked it. So ultimately, we are where we are. That's 93 points with two games to go. You have to get promotion with you know more than two points a game. It's incredible, really. Um, I'm so proud of the group that to lose one game in, as I think it's 33, is just an unbelievable feat for, for this group of players. Um, happy for all the staff who work so hard every day, not just the football staff, all the staff at Ewood, all the staff at the academy, the people at Ewood who clean the do the laundry every day, who cut the pitches, who make the food. It's you know I'm just so happy for them because they're all Rovers fans. They're also happy. Most of them would have been in that stand tonight. Um, yeah, we've we've achieved what we set out to at the start of the season, and we can ask no more of that. We've got two games to go. We we'll go and try and win them because we're quite proud to go through a season and only at this moment have lost five games. Um, so let's see where we finish. But job done, really. I, I know people can talk about the title, and we we, we will try. But I'd have to say, listen, we're going to have had a fantastically consistent season as well, and uh, they're a good good team. We've both achieved what we set out to do at the start of the season and um, that's all that should matter. Nobody knows who finishes one or finishes two in a, in a year or two's time. But uh, the job for us was to was to get out of this division at first attempt and we managed to do it. Well, listen, you're around them, you can feel it. It's not, you know, sometimes people talk cheap words, but um, they're a really tight, they are a really tight group. They, um, they, I, I, because I respect their their qualities, their human qualities, I give them a voice. I've talked to you about recently about them leading the team. If I didn't think they were responsible, I didn't think they were good human beings, they wouldn't have a word and I would be doing everything. And yet this group, you know, the Mulgrews, the Bennetts, the Conways, the Grahams, they are senior players with a with a conscience and with uh, without a huge egos. And um, they want the team to win. They want to be successful. They're embarrassed to be in League One, I think. And um, so I give them a voice, I give them a, a, a say in our timing, I, you know, I discuss the, the schedules with them and, um, and they listen, they take it on the grass and make it happen, they, you know, I'm not heading balls in or kicking them out at the back, they are and um, I'm just delighted for them, they're so happy in there. I think so, you know, a special season for him, I don't know how many that is, he's 14, has he got now? You know, an unbelievable number for a central defender, as I, I mentioned earlier. You, Derek Mountfield, when I was playing in 86 or 87, when Everton were league champions, would, would score, I think, 13 or 14 for Everton. And uh, centre halves don't score them sort of numbers. It's, and yet Mulgrew's done that, and, and that's great credit to his quality and his desire and uh, determination and, and, and leadership qualities. I listen, my, I always, it's, it, my emotion is generally relief. You put so much work into the preparation of a game, you sit for hours studying the opposition, watching how they play, where their threats are, where we need to be solid and strong, where we need to attack. And then you take it on the grass and you go through it with the players, where to play, how to move the ball in certain areas, when to, when to get into areas, how to lock teams in so they can't break away on us. And you, so much work goes into each event, each game. When it finishes, it's just a relief, really, when you get a positive result. And so I sit there and just let the emotion drain out of me, really. Um, 
I, I don't think I've ever sought the spotlight in life really. I have a family man, I've got three amazing children and an amazing wife and I balance my life between football and family. Um, my thoughts are I want to speak to my family. I, my kids have probably gone to bed now but um, I'll take them to school in the morning. I'll take my wife for breakfast. Um, and then I've got a meeting at Ewood um, about Conor Mahoney. So, um, <laughs> so uh, back to work. But we've got two games to go, and, and you know we'll, that preparation, like I talked there about, is will be will be starting because on Thursday we have to start thinking about um, about Charlton. Yeah, right up there. Listen, I, every achievement's good. You know, I, so my first job achieving European qualification with a club like Hibernian when you've got Celtic and Rangers in the league is a fantastic achievement. And then to win West Brom's first ever championship title in 88 years was some achievement um, I made an emotional decision after West Brom went back to Celtic because of emotional reasons about when I lost my wife to breast cancer and um, didn't quite work out Middlesbrough's my hometown team and when that came calling I was never going to turn that down and yet it was in a bit of turmoil and a bit of um, there was major problems that, that in my three years I couldn't resolve financially they resolved them after I left but um, went to Coventry because Coventry won the FA Cup in 87 is a massive club in my mind a big big team um, and when this opportunity came along this is Blackburn Rovers you know I, I've sat and watched she I played against Alan Shearer with, with my boots on and my shirt on and, um, <clears throat> and I managed teams against Blackburn Rovers in the Premier League and what an opportunity for me to to come and try and do what I do at football clubs and um, I'm just happy to, to help really, happy that it puts a smile on some Rovers fans' faces who haven't been smiling very much for the last six, seven, eight years and um, and let's see if we can build on it really. I, I, I'm not daft enough either, I know that it's the Rosie's smell doesn't last very long, you know, you lose two or three on the bounce next year in the Championship and the booze will be out and uh, the questions about your, 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 um, your abilities but the moment we should enjoy it, the players should enjoy it, the summer will be tough regarding trying to uh, speak to the owners, see how, how much um, investment we're going to put into the team and then um, see if we can build a team to help this group of players be, be relatively successful next year and make sure we compete in the, in the next league up. I've had a little bit of what I've had to say about the match. What's been going on on social media? Well, to be honest with you, it's pretty slim pickings in regards to the Charlton game. So you're going to have to make do with what I got. Anyway, over on the Book of Face, Sam Lord on the Rovers Facebook page said this. Get me to Charlton away Saturday. Absolutely buzzing. Been a long time since we've had anything to cheer about. Love this club. And Tony Mowbray. He also, uh, Cal Atkins says, party at Charlton. Hats and balloons, the whole lot. Will Hayes, also on the same page. Charlton is pretty much just a party now. Matt Douglas. Any boycotters want a free ticket for Oxford next week? Hashtag bring a boycotter. Can't wait for Charlton a game. Uh, should be a great day. Uh, one Rovers, and that was Andy Andy Woods in response to Matt Douglas. Anyway, Josh McGillen, I say uh, we at Chart we bring blue and white balloons to the game to celebrate our promotion. Let's get this around. Damo Miller on the same page. Blue and white balloons for Charlton. Let's all have a party. Indeed, it should be a party atmosphere now because we're out of this division. Thank you, uh, thank you, South End. Thank you, Fleetwood. Thanks, Gillingham. Thanks, Rochdale, Plymouth. All you lot. Thank you very much. Hopefully, we won't have to. We we'll have to come to your grounds again for a good time. Yet, no disrespect to you, but I'm hoping that we can uh, can get our shit together this time and stay in the championship and maybe maybe kick on onwards upwards. Meanwhile, Dave Morrissey said this: Now that we're up, the building process has to start again. It doesn't sound like Big T is going to be too sentimental either. It took it'll be a tough to see some of our stars this season move on or take a back seat, but we need to investment to push on. Who do you reckon will get the chop? Well, I. I am going to be doing a special buy, keep or sell video probably once the season wraps up and we can kind of kind of, uh, just kind of get a grand vision of what's going on. So you'll get my decisions and my verdicts on who we're going to keep, who we're going to get rid of and maybe, maybe who we're going to bring in. Anyway, moving forward, Grant Jeffries. Uh, this is a, a shout out to all you guys going to Charlton. Please forgive me for intruding and I hope you don't mind. I am a Charlton fan, but I ask your help. My youngest son, Jack Jeffries, has neoblasma stage four and we are trying to raise money for a treatment in America as it's not available here. We are selling wristbands and lanyards at the Valley on Saturday. Please help. We are desperate. There's a Facebook page, which is Jack Jeffries' fight against neoplastoma against NL. Apologies for gate crashing. If you want to make fun of me, fine. 
course, we're not going to make fun of you, Grant. Obviously, if you guys are watching this and you are going down to the Valley to uh, watch this game, uh, stop by, buy a lanyard, buy a uh, wristband. Every little helps, and let's hope we can, we can sort something out for this young chap. Um, but yes, come on, boys. Dig deep, cough up, and help the lads uh, with, his, with his illness there. Moving forward on the BRFCS forum, if you've not checked out that forum, make sure you do so. They are talking about the uh, Charlton game, but they're also talking about the old uh, promotion business and the party business. But anyway, a couple comments from them. Philip L said this, strangely, this is going to be a big test of character. Charlton have everything to play for, and we are simply keeping going, hoping Wigan failed to win one of the last two fixtures in order to win the title. Hoping for a massive Rovers party, he says. As for JB, he says, two games to save our club. That's an ongoing joke at that forum. It was like 10 games to save our club, nine games to save our club. And it's all the way down now to two games to save our club. And I'm sure it's going to be a one game to save our club uh, little message when that comes around. Now, over the years, a number of players have played for both Charlton and Blackburn Rovers. Here are, what have I got, three of them? Uh, Marcus Bent, that's right, striker sensation for Charlton, I think. Uh, he also donned the old blue and white for Blackburn Rovers. Scored a couple of goals for Rovers. Not really my cup of tea, but when you come in, when you, when you, your biggest era is the Shearer Sutton era, and then you go to Marcus Bent and uh, I don't know Eagle Ostenstadt, that kind of stuff. You kind of like meh. But anyway, uh, Danny Murphy, not my cup of tea either. This fella, uh, especially when it's blue and white days, mugged us off with some cash. Uh, he was more familiar with his days in Charlton and, of, co of course, Liverpool. How about this guy, Keith Gillespie, the wizard on the wing, sort of. Uh, I think he arrived in some part of the deal that involved Alan Shearer or something uh, when he went to Newcastle. I don't know. I don't know. But anyway, he did okay for Rovers. It wasn't, again, it wasn't really phenomenal. But, you know, I think he probably had his best days either in Newcastle, sure, or a uh, Black and Rose. But anyway, he did play for Charlton as well. Uh, and here he is. If you want to check out a full extensive list of the players that have played for both Black and Rose and Charlton, head over to my WordPress site. Links to that bad boy are in the description below. Now you've heard what I've to say about the match and the fans and maybe even the gaffer. But forget about it. Completely put it in the back of your mind. What really matters is what Cast the Cat thinks will happen between Blackburn Rovers and Charlton at the Valley. <laughs> today folks if you've enjoyed this video give it a thumbs up if you are new to the channel wake up and smell the coffee and hit the subscribe button to keep you bang up to date with all things Blackburn Rovers whether it's in League One or the Championship or even in between there's a lot of content going to be coming out of this channel over the close season uh, so stand by for that a lot of Rovers content and also a lot of World Cup content it's actually going to be quite a fun place so make sure you stick around and hit the subscribe button anyway uh, I am still celebrating whoop whoop I need to get out of these clothes though because they are humming of booze. Obviously, a bit too much celebrating last night, if you know what I mean. Um, but yeah, party time continues, and hopefully, hopefully, we can get those those a couple more points more than them uh, fellas down the road, uh, Wigan, and then get ourselves the old number one spot. Anyway, till then, thumbs up, subscribe, ciao for now. Thanks again for watching. Please like, share, and most importantly, hit that subscribe button. It'll keep you bang up to date with all things Blackburn Rovers. But if you want to check out something completely different, head over to my other YouTube channel. You do that by pressing the button right there. If you want to check me out on Twitter, Facebook, details are in the description below. So until next time, thumbs up, subscribe.